um, at the shows, and that is in India. And then it was against um, uh, the crown laws or the laws that were there because India then was colonized by Britain. And that particular walk, he had over 60,000 people joining in. And uh, when the leaders then, you know, the British leaders then got wind of this and what was happening, they incarcerated over 60,000 people. Um, but the interesting thing was this. And of course, Mahatma Gandhi was among those that were also incarcerate, uh, in, incarcerated. Um, but the interesting thing was this. When that happened, the world uh, had this sympathy and empathy for India and not the British. So in the long run, this brought about, you know, the freedom that was attained afterwards. So that work, the results didn't, sh did, 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 uh, didn't show instantly, but they certainly showed in the long run. So that is one of the works that were extremely important, and they changed the world trajectory. So works, for a simple reason, they create awareness. And from that work, which, which took place in 1930, it inspired people like, you know, Martin Luther King, uh, who made a work in 1963. That should be, you know, 26th August. And 200,000 people participated in that particular work. And it was for a simple cause. Um, it was a work protesting against racial discrimination and just, you know, equal rights. And that particular work led to the speech that most of us know, uh, done by Martin Luther King, which is, I have a dream. And there's a line that, you know, a number of people really remember out of that particular work, which is, um, I look forward to a time when my four children will not be judged based on the color of their skin, but based on the content of their character. What a wonderful line. So from that walk, Many things began changing, and 50 years later, uh, America had the first black president in Barack Obama. So these walks uh, truly create awareness, and um, they truly give, you know, the drive uh, for things to change. So change might not happen instantly, but certainly it tends uh, to come through. So I just thought of indicating that there have been, you know, many works that have taken place and we shouldn't um, expect results instantly. Now, here's the thing. In our Zambian setup, we've also had a couple of works. We've had works uh, uh, against cyberbullying. We've had works against tribalism. We've had works... Um, uh, for women, advocating for women. We've had works against cancer, you know, TB awareness. And so we've had many, many works. Works do one thing. They create awareness. And they make it possible for the population to know that this is what is happening and we need to wake up this way and this is what we need to do. That is the whole essence of works. Because I've had people ask sometimes, but why work? Uh, why, why not act this way or maybe act that way? Why walk? Walks do one thing. They create awareness. And results tend to show uh, sooner than later. And I can give an example of um, one country called Estonia. Now, Estonia was um, colonized or was occupied by the Soviet Union. Uh, then once the Soviet Union left, uh, the Nazis took over of Estonia, a country. Uh, after the Nazis, the Soviet Union came back. When the Soviet Union came back, they decided uh, to, uh, to take away um, uh, the culture of the Estonians. So what they did is they removed over a quarter of Estonians and took them to Siberia. Um, it was for a simple reason. They wanted to kill their culture and just remove um, the whole country altogether. But at one time, in 1986, 
1987, the Estonians uh, decided to wake up and they started singing uh, their songs. And this brought about, you know, uh, the revolution. Uh, as they joined in the streets, they were marching, they were walking and whatnot. Sooner than later, after five years, they got their independence. I'm saying this for a simple reason. Uh, results might not show instantly, but they certainly do show. So works create awareness, which later on, you know, uh, gives fruits. So with that said, we have a walk at hand, which is the walk from, you know, Congo to Zambia. And this walk is from the 2nd of April to the 18th of April. So it is beginning after Kasumbalesa on the Congolese side, where we'll be welcomed by the mayor of that region, well, which is Katanga region. The mayor of that region will welcome us and we'll have a kickoff of the walk, which is the second, by the way. This being, you know, the 30th, the second is just, you know, um, two days from now, which will be a Friday. So we'll start the walk from that side, cross Kasumbalesa border, and arrive in Lusaka at East Park, where we will have, you know, the grand closing on the 18th of April, which will be a Sunday. Now, this is what will be happening during the walk. As we cross to Kasumbalesa, we'll be talking uh, to people, those that will gather up, will be mentoring them in business, and all through will be meeting uh, universities and colleges and will be talking to them. Uh, so there are a number of universities that are lined up. There are some churches that are lined up. And it is still open for those groups that would want mentorship, would stop over and talk to them and address them in line with entrepreneurship. And the reason is simple. Uh, we want to create awareness. So those that want to join the walk, so there are those that are joining us on the walk all the way from Congo to Lusaka, but we have realized that not everyone can participate in this walk from beginning to the end. So what we are encouraging people to do is you can join us at your area of convenience. So you could be in Chililabombwe, you can join us from Chililabombwe, uh, and just cover five and just cover five kilometers. That is fine. Or you can join us from Chiridabombwe up to Chingola. That is fine. You can join us from Kasumbalesa to Chiridabombwe. That is fine. From Chingola to Kitwe, <clears throat> it is still fine. So wherever you are comfortable, and just join us for a uh, for a journey that you can you know conveniently cover. So from Kitwe, uh, we'll be hitting them uh, at the hype in Kitwe. So we are going to have a couple of activities. So a number of people will be joining us in Kitwe. So you can join us in Kitwe, cover five kilometers or ten kilometers, then walk back or get on a vehicle back, or you can walk with us all the way to Ndola. So you just need to be free. You can participate in a very small way or you can, or you can participate in a big way, whichever way you are comfortable. What we are basically looking at is to make sure that awareness is created and we embrace entrepreneurship. And there are five things that we want to achieve in this particular work. Five things that we would be so glad to achieve after this work. So here's the thing. Number one, we want to make sure that awareness is created. We need to uh, see to it that people realize that entrepreneurship is the way to go. You see, back in the days when our parents said, go to school, get a job, and become successful, they were right. They were right because then Zambia had two universities. They had, uh, we had the Copper Belt University and the University of Zambia. So if you graduated, a job was waiting for you. Uh, but you see, 27 years later, Zambia has over 50 registered universities. So getting a job has become extremely difficult. In fact, even you know, courses that guaranteed you a job, take for instance, education. If you graduated as a teacher in 2000, you would be posted instantly. A job would be waiting for you. But now, you know, 2018, 54,000 applied to be posted as teachers, only 2,000 were picked. Uh, then later on, 27,000 applied, only 2,009 
were picked. Now, this makes it clear that, you see, getting a job as a teacher uh, <laughs> is no longer easy. In fact, it is clear that at the current rate that you are moving at, at the current rate that you are moving at, if you graduated as a teacher and you don't use any shortcuts to get a job, you have to wait for at least 50 years before you are posted. It is for a simple reason. The tables have changed. And you might think, no, that is just about education or maybe being teachers. You can talk of lawyers. Lawyers from 2018, when 300 lawyers were called to the bar, getting a job as a lawyer has become very difficult. In fact, you have lawyers getting, you know, uh, mega salaries of 1,500, 1,000 kwacha, 2,000 kwacha. These are lawyers that have been called to the bar. So getting a job has become extremely difficult. Uh, uh, many, many courses. You can talk of, you know, uh, medicine now. That is cream de la cream. You see people that do medicine, those are people that we respect. Uh, those are people that are in school for seven years. Uh, back in the days, if you are, you know, doing medicine, uh, in your 60th year, 7th year, your future is set. Everything is set. But now we saw uh, protests not too long ago, you know, medical doctors coming together, complaining to see how they could be posted. Uh, it is for a simple reason. The job market is saturated. And uh, now if medical doctors are having it that hard, what of you who is studying, you know, ontology or is it insects what are the odds that you you have a job waiting for you now this is positioning us in one direction this is positioning us to say we need to begin thinking of entrepreneurship we need to begin realizing that entrepreneurship is the way to go entrepreneurship will spur innovation it will create employment and we need to realize that you see back in the days when two people graduated, one decided to go the route of entrepreneurship and another one decided to go the route of seeking employment. It was clear that that one who goes the route of entrepreneurship, the risk is high that he will fail and will be a failure in life. The risk was higher that way. Uh, that one who gets a job, the future would be much more set. But now tables have changed. If two graduated at the same time, one pursues entrepreneurship upon graduation, then the other one decides just to search for a job after graduation. There are higher chances that he who decides to uh, pursue the route of entrepreneurship, pursue the route of enterprising their skills, has higher chances of having some money and securing their future than this one who goes the route of, you know, just searching for a job. And this is not just in Zambia, even across Africa. It takes an average of six years to get a job in a field that you have trained in. Now, when we say an average of six years, it simply means others might go as far as, you know, eight, nine, ten years before getting a job that they have trained in. So this says one simple thing. You are at a higher risk if you just tune your mind to say, I just need to get a job. You are even better placed to see the course that you've trained in, uh, see how you can monetize your special abilities. So what you want to achieve, number one, is to create awareness that a time has come for us to embrace entrepreneurship. And no two ways about it, and we need to realize that. That is the first thing. Number two, we need to change the mindset. The mindset really has to change. And this is extremely important for one simple reason. You see, now, um, a typical example, uh, for us men, if you want to marry, uh, the family to, uh, uh, to the bride in trying to know the man who wants to marry their daughter, the first question is, what does, where does he work? I mean, that is normally the first question. Where does he work? Instead of asking, what does he do? It is for a simple reason. It is believed that uh, one is supposed to be employed and, you know, not running a business or monetizing their skills. No. The belief is that one must be, you know, employed. And that is why uh, when one is running a business, even if he's making a 30,000 kwacha a month, a 50,000 kwacha a month as profit, that one would not be as respected as one 
who sits and puts on a tie and is a bank teller. Why? Because this one is working. Where does he work? He works in the bank. What does he? He's a bank teller. He is getting a salary of 5,000, 3,000, or 7,000. Families would be okay with that. Why? Because the mindset is set to say when you are employed, you are, you know, better placed than one who is an entrepreneur. So that mindset must change. Over and above that, our mindset must change because we are so much more comfortable with poverty. You know, we believe that he who becomes rich cannot just become rich. There is something wrong with them. That person must be a satanist. And that is why those that seem to be succeeding and doing something for themselves, uh, they are called satanists in these families. It is a common norm. Why? Because our mindset is wrong. And this mindset must change. Because we believe that a white man who comes in can succeed. It is okay. We have no problem with that one. But not a Zambian. If a Zambian succeeds, there is something wrong with him. It's either he's stolen, he's a crook, or there's just something wrong with him. Because it is not normal for a Zambian to be successful. Now, that mindset must change. So, we'll be talking a lot um, about mindset change. And this is extremely important, that we change our mindset and realize that it is okay as Zambians to become successful. It is okay as Zambians to be in charge of our economy. It is okay. So, number one, what you're basically saying is that we want to create awareness. Number two, we want to change the mindset. Then number three, we want to open people's eyes to opportunities. And there could be a question to say, why did we choose to go to Kasumbalesa? It is for a simple reason. We decided to start our walk from, you know, Congo for a simple reason. The whole region, the whole Katanga region, which has a population similar to the population of Zambia, a population of about 17, 18 um, uh, million people, that, that region, they are not doing much farming. And if you look at them, they depend so much on things coming from, you know, Zambia, you know, things coming through Kasumbalesa border, things coming from South Africa. So they are dependent on other regions to feed them. So what if we took advantage of those opportunities to trade with those guys? What if we took advantage of um, the business opportunities that are presented to us from that side? So all through the journey, we'll be looking at opportunities that uh, are presented to us. We'll be opening Zambians uh, uh, to these many opportunities that we can take advantage. Not just from Kasumbales, even just locally. Uh, we need to begin seeing how we can, you know, uh, get some of these opportunities. Simple basic things, like take for instance, uh, when Airtel is doing adverts with these TV stations uh, and radio stations, the people that negotiate on behalf of Airtel. It is not a Zambian company. It is a Kenyan company. So we Zambians are just spectators in our economy. So we'll be talking about some of these things to see how we can, you know, open our eyes and begin seeing the opportunities that are there. So that is the third thing. Uh, then the fourth thing is that, you see, we have complained so much about the syllabus. We have complained so much that, you see, from a very young age, we are tuned to think about, you know, getting a job. So what we are advocating for now, this is for the powers that be. We need a syllabus that will enhance entrepreneurship from a very young age. We need a syllabus that will encourage uh, us to enterprise. So this is what we'll be looking at, to say, uh, can we introduce something from a very young age that would make it possible for these people, you know, grade sevens, grade tens, grade twelves, to begin thinking about how they can monetize their skills. So that is the fourth one. Then the fifth one uh, is we need an enabling environment uh, for us to be entrepreneurs. You see, it is one thing to call people to say join and become entrepreneurs, and it is yet another for these people to flourish. So we need an enabling environment. And this is the call on the powers that be to say we need an environment that encourages entrepreneurship and one that cultivates entrepreneurship. And here are the simple basic things that we need to realize. Uh, simple basic things like paying suppliers on time is one thing which is extremely important which can open doors for many people to become entrepreneurs. Because if you are not paying people that supply 
on time, that is one single great thing that has brought a lot of businesses down. So what I'm basically saying is that we need an enabling environment in many fronts. You know, a stable economy, it is extremely important uh, for entrepreneurs to flourish. Um, because if the economy is stable, the exchange rate is stable, it gives us an opportunity to plan and succeed as entrepreneurs. So what are the five things that we need to achieve in this particular work? Number one, we are saying let us create awareness that entrepreneurship is the way to go. Number two, we need a mindset change. We have this mindset that is you know, so caught up in poverty. We are so comfortable in poverty. So we need to see how we can change ourselves from this. Number three, uh, we'll be pointing out on opportunities that are there. What is it that we Zambians can do to better ourselves? Then number four, we need a syllabus that encourages entrepreneurship. And what are we as families, as the corporate, you know, um, uh, um, world, as... As individuals, what are we contributing towards this issue of the syllabus that would encourage you know, young people to enterprise? And lastly, number five, we need an enabling environment that supports entrepreneurship. And this would call for the powers that be to play a part in this. So those are the five things that we would really wish to achieve in this walk from Congo to Zambia, championing entrepreneurship. And we want everyone to take part in this particular cause. Then on that note, I would want us to interact because this is an interactive program. You can call in on the number showing on the screen so that we can discuss a lot more. And please, as you call in, make sure that the volume on your TV set is low so that we do not get feedback. Hello? Yes. Hi, good evening. Very well, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. My name is Roy Chisha. Oh, Mr. Roy. Yes, yes. Yes, you may please go ahead, sir. Okay. I'm just watching this for the movie TV. Is it live? Yes, it is live, actually. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, I'm um, just to raise up to, to, to get your message. And... Uh, I'd like to say thank you for uh, the message of encouragement. I'll be making a contribution also uh, by, uh, by, by next week to support your call. Oh. call. oh, that is so humbling to hear, sir. I'll be in touch. I'll save the number. Okay, uh, which number are you going to save this? Okay, so, so this particular number might, um, yes. might not be available for... Um, uh, for calls after this, but the okay. number you can get is um, uh, 0975. Yes. 0975 um, 76 uh, yes. 57 36. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Royd. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. So you are free. Thank you so much, Mr. Royd, uh, for coming through and for wishing to contribute towards this cause. And I must indicate that um, a number of people have actually come in uh, to contribute towards this cause. Uh, let me pick this call. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mobe. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. Wonderful. Calling you from, calling you from Kashiwe. Oh, you are welcome sure. to Unscripted. Yeah, I'm enjoying your program. Very nice and encouraging. Humbling yeah, to hear that. I'm actually self-employed, so I really appreciate your rhyme of thought very much. Yeah. I've oh. seen a lot of young ones who always uh, think of in terms of employment. Most mm. of the time, miss a lot of opportunities in terms of yeah. Trying even on a small basis to go in an entrepreneurship way. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think entrepreneurship, as you put it, is the right way to go for sure. Wow. I like that thought where you put some thought in, 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 in our culture today. Is that the example that matters a lot of wealth is either you attempt to corrupt, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or as you put it, a certain is. We know people who have been called certain just because they are much worse when others are there. So I think employment is a way to, to enrich a country. Socially speaking, I think it's a
Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, uh, for that call. Um, indeed, you see, <laughs> and this issue of calling people Satanists has, uh, has, uh, has levels. You find that uh, those in the villages, eh, if, you, if you have a big tire bicycle, uh, you'll be called a Satanist. So if you're in the compounds and you have a very small shop and you seem to be progressing, you'll be called a Satanist. Uh, if you are... <laughs> And you may think even the learned people might not say this. You look at it at national level. The people that are doing extremely well, they are called Satanists. So we need to change it, this mindset and realize that we can make it as Zambians and there is nothing wrong with that. Hello? Hello, good evening. Good evening, thank you. Yes, sir, you are through to Unscripted. Joe from Riverside? Copper Belt. Oh, from Copper Belt, Riverside. Okay. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. yeah. Let me just simplify entrepreneurship for you to understand as a, a farmer. Okay. Oh, simplifying entrepreneurship for you to understand as a farmer. All right. Uh, th thank you. So there's a question to simplify entrepreneurship for him to understand as a farmer. Entrepreneurship has two things. It is your ability to take a risk with the hope of making a profit. So whichever definition that you look at, those are the two things that are there. The ability to take a risk with the hope of making a profit. Uh, so that is the basic uh, definition. So you as a farmer, it is an issue of uh, seeing, now, for you to become a farmer in the first place, you have taken a risk. And the risk that you have taken is to plant. Because if you plant, what if things do not germinate? Uh, now, what if something just happens, you know, weather does this and that? Uh, that is a risk. But your hope should be to make a profit at the end of it all. So, entrepreneurship, in simpler words, uh, it is the ability to take a risk with the hope of making a profit. Hello, good evening. Oh, sorry, I missed what you said. You are through Hello. to unscripted. Yes, sir. Hi, good evening. Evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, it's an honor to speak with you. The pleasure is mine. To, I just wanted to mention that we are really turning our country upside down. And that they're really inspiring a lot of young people. There's really a lot of you know, energy focusing on entrepreneurship right now. And it's probably because of the, the partnership that you've brought into the game. Wow. That's so humbling yeah. to hear. This is so great. May you please continue to do the same. And it's just so inspiring to see a lot of you know, these entrepreneurship talks going on like that. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for those kind words. I truly appreciate uh, your kind words, sir. Thank you so much. All right, so we, we need consented efforts. Uh, to succeed, we need consented efforts. All of us must come on board and see how we can move our country forward. Hello, good evening. Hello, how are you? Very well, how are you, sir? You are through to unscripted, sir. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Uh, my name is um, Billy Mwanza from uh, Fit the Nation Business Solutions. Oh, okay. Oh, Mr. Mwanza, you're welcome. Yes, my sister. So, uh, now, my question that I had uh, is, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say we, 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 we were able to gather as uh, a crowd, you know, walking from Congo to Osaka here. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. How, how are we keeping uh, those uh, COVID health guidelines? Have we already uh, uh, keep that, uh, have we kept that in mind already? All right. All right. Uh, yes, certainly. Um, we'll, we'll make sure that there is social distancing and, you know, just the basic guidelines are there. 
Because um, rem uh, remember that you also go to the markets and you meet people uh, there. Uh, so safety is on yourself, but as organizers, we will be doing the best that we can as well just to make sure that uh, there is social distancing, uh, there is masking where need be. Uh, yeah, so we are putting all those pieces together. Uh, so we have masks and we have sanitizers, hand sanitizers, like, like we are just making sure that we are putting all pieces together uh, because we are, we are not oblivious of the fact that COVID is there. Wonderful, yes, yes. Indeed, uh, we shouldn't uh, let our guards down me as, as a country. But uh, uh, this, this, this uh, event is really, really important for our country uh, and as, as entrepreneurs. So uh, we need to open our eyes and see opportunity. Many businesses, not a billion dollar businesses, started from uh, school, college. So really, uh, having that syllabus that opens uh, the children's eyes and whatnot is very, very important. So I will be joining you, especially at the final day, uh, to the grand closure. Yes. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, and others can also join in on the final day. Thank you so much, Mr. Mwanza. See you then. Thank you very much. Yeah, so you are free to join in, like I indicated, from whichever spot that you might be joining us from. It, should be, uh, it could be Kawe, Kapiri, or even on the grand closing of the event. Uh, you are very free to join us. Uh, feel free. To be part of the journey and this journey will be covered on movie tv it will be showing and other media houses even on the page most importantly uh dumisani linga mangali Nube. that is my page the journey will be covered live there hi good evening sir hello good evening hello good evening good evening how are you Thank you. What an honor to speak to you, to signing. The the pleasure is mine. <laughs> yeah, my, my name is Mushota Kelly. Uh, sorry, yeah? Mushota Kelly. Oh, Mushota. You're welcome, yes, Mr. Mushota. I, 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 I am actually the National Youth Vice, uh, I'm actually the National Youth uh, Chairperson for Mosio, which is a labor organization. Oh. And um, I've, I've actually been thinking about programs that we can do with you in terms of empowering out, in terms of mentorship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that, uh, you know, apart from uh, being employed, the youth can actually also be entrepreneurs. So it's actually an honor that you, you are taking this route and we are looking forward to come to your office. For me, it's, um, it, it, it's, um, it's really an appeal to key stakeholders like the government. Yes, sir. Recently, we, we saw government empowering people, dishing out huge sums of money to, to the youth, which is not a bad thing, they say. But I think it would have been well if government looked at people like you and sought out certain packages for those people before actually giving physical cash. They needed to have the information and the experience, the exposure, and telling that you come in. That way, even after empowering physical cash, the cash was going to be used in a better way, and it was going to beat even others. Because wow. when, we, when, when we call one youth today, it should not end on them. They yeah. are able to replicate that and also empower them. So for me, really, it's like, and the government recognize the good work that you are doing and work with you. Wow. Uh, all these other stakeholders that are in, 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 in uh, that have opportunities to empower us, the youth, can they wow. work with you to help you, uh, bring you to the youth for, for you to be able to be a mentor? these people because the success, your success stories are all over to be seen. So let it not just be a story of uh, government announcing that they've given this to people, but can they also give knowledge that is so much needed, even more so than the physical cash that is being given out or the physical assets that are being given out. No, thank you so much, and Mr. Uh, we, we, we really, as, as, as the union, we really looking forward to come with you to your office. Beautiful stuff, Mr. Mshota. I'm so privileged to receive um, uh, a call uh, uh, 
uh, from the national leadership. Thank you so much. And, um, Thank you so much. Yeah. And I, 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 should, I should echo what Mr. Mshota has indicated. There are two things here. There is capital. And, and, and the problem is this. When people say capital, they normally mean financial capital. Financial capital is important, yes. Financial capital has its place. Uh, the most important form of capital is the intellectual capital, the skills uh, to run a business. You see, if financial capital is the most important uh, form of capital that we need, then those that, are, that have retired and gotten their pension would have become successful entrepreneurs. But they had the money, they still failed. For a simple reason, they did not have the skills. People get loans and still fail because they do not have the skills. People put their savings together, invest in a business, and still fail because they do not have the skills. So in as financial capital is uh, important, but it has its place. The most important form of capital that we need is intellectual capital, and we need to realize that. Thank you so much, Mr. Mshota. We shall surely be in touch. Hello, good evening. You are through to Unscripted. Hello, good evening. Evening, sir. How are you? I'm fine, and how are you, Mr. Dunsa? Very, very well, sir. Yes, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, about, the, since, uh, about this work, uh, championing entrepreneurship. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. As for us, from uh, who are uh, in Osaka, and we want to attend this, uh, uh, this work, but we don't know how... How is the arrangement from here to South to Kasumbali? So we just need to do our own means. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. I will respond to that just now. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, for those that are in Lusaka, and for those that are in whichever part of the country that you might be, you can join in the work at whichever place that you want to join in. So for those in Lusaka. Um, if you want to be part of the team that will be coming from Kasumbalesa, you can travel to Kasumbalesa uh, and, you know, we can walk back together. That is fine. So we have no problem with that. Uh, or you can travel to Kabwe and join us from Kabwe com uh, coming back. And I've seen a number of people that are joining us from 10 miles, you know, uh, coming to the grand closure of the event. But if you can cover the whole journey, that would be great. So you are at liberty. So what you need to do to get the details, you can get to the page Dumisani Lingamangali Ngube. All the details are there. And we share quite a lot. I share quite a lot on entrepreneurship on that particular page. And if you need further details, uh, you can get in touch on 0975765736, which is the number that will help guide on how the movements will be. But if you follow the page, you will see where it will be at whichever time. It will almost be live. So you can't miss us, and you can be part of this cause. So now to finally answer your question, if you want to join from Kasumbalesa, you might have to make your own arrangements. But there are some people that will go with the team that I'll be going with uh, that we have facilitated um, uh, uh, transport for. So thank you so much for asking. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening. Is it unscripted? Unscripted, sir. Uh, Dumisani here. Much. This is John calling me from uh, within the circle. Okay. Great. Yes. John. So I wanted to recommend you for the job that you're doing. And uh, I could like to ask uh, just maybe two or one question. Please, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to get your, your personal opinion on over what other people say to say you need money to make money. And uh, from, from, your, from your perspective, what do you think about that thing? And uh, I really want to recommend you over the job that you're doing because uh, I think it has become a norm here in Zambia, for especially people who are graduates, to always just look forward to employment. I don't know if it's a school system that has uh, engraved that in our mindset to say whenever you complete school, all you have to do is look for a job. Because I've seen fellow graduates who have gone as much as uh, paying other people 10,000 quarters mm -hmm. to seek jobs in government and stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe if we had people who had the mentality, maybe because from your perspective, if I gave you that 10,000 quarters, I'm sure you could share ideas on how people can invest that money and make up something. All right, maybe great. We move from that perspective of saying the school system should program people to get employment. 
Okay. And like to power in people. Yeah, so true. I'd like you to tackle those two, please. Thank you very much. All right, great. So I think the second one um, uh, is actually, you know, uh, 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 covered in the education system. I think there is, uh, it is one of the key points that will be marching on, and which, uh, which is the fourth one. You see about our education system, how can we position ourselves, what is it that needs to be done. And by the way, we've done quite a bit as, um, as DLN Entrepreneurship Institute. Uh, we have invested in a curriculum, so there, there are a few things that will be coming in. Like take for instance, we've, we've actually been complaining about the syllabus, um, and it has been taking long to change. So what we've then opted to do is to create what, uh, what are known as DON Kids Tablets. So these tablets teach uh, kids, uh, uh, very young ones up to grade 7, uh, very young kids on how to enterprise. So in instead of just waiting for the syllabus to change, we have decided to create our own syllabus, which is parallel uh, uh, to that. And this is meant to teach the, the young people entrepreneurship. Then at the same time, as we are teaching the young people entrepreneurship, there are lessons for parents on how to guide uh, their children, their babies in line with entrepreneurship. And just a basic line, did you, uh, did you know that you could teach a one-month-old baby to love mathematics, there are a couple of things that can be done to make a one-month-old baby to love mathematics because we believe that mathematics is the mother of all innovation. So we are doing something, and for the teens, we, we have what is known as DLN Teens Tablets. We, we are putting all these pieces together to make sure that um, uh, we, uh, 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 we create the interest uh, in the young people towards entrepreneurship. As we are waiting for the syllabus to change officially, we have said we cannot keep complaining and blaming uh, the powers that be. We are taking things in our own hands and we are changing our syllabus and we are having a parallel syllabus. And if you look at some of the graduates at DLN Entrepreneurship Institute are running phenomenal businesses. And I can give a number of examples of people that have graduated and are doing great. So we have seen that it is possible that people can be taught entrepreneurship. Now coming to your first question, um, your first question was, uh, what is my take on the saying that it takes money to make money? So that saying is true. Uh, those that have money can easily, you know, make money because there are certain businesses that inevitably you will need funds. But how also do you respond to those whose parents died and they inherited a lot of wealth but they lost it? They had the money, but why didn't they make the money? So in as that saying has some truth to it, there, there is a larger chunk which is not so true because you can have money and still lose it. So does it take money to make money? Yes, uh, but not, not entirely uh, because you can have money and still lose it. I hope I have tried to answer that. It depends on the skills of the person who has money uh, because there are those... Uh, well, if I had two people, one has a one million and, and doesn't have the skills, and the other one has a 10,000 and has skills of multiplying that 10,000, I would bank with the guy for 10,000 and not the guy with the one million, because that one million would finish, but the guy for 10,000 would multiply and get it to more than one million. Hello, good evening. You are through to Unscripted. Hello? You are through to Unscripted, sir. Yes, sir. You are welcome. How are you? I'm very okay. This is uh, Johnson Kaumba calling from uh, Ikerenge district in the Oh, you are welcome, sir. You can give your, your thought. We wish to recommend you for the good job well done. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Johnson from Ikelenge. You see, what is so surprising is I have not received a call from a lady. Uh, is it that we, we do not have female entrepreneurs? And just on that same note, I had um, uh, one of the uh, in, uh, entrepreneurs that are doing phenomenally well, the Z farmer, Mar Maria Zalomez, who came in yesterday and donated seedlings worth 10,000 kwacha. Uh, towards this cause. And we've had a couple of others that have been coming in and donating, you know, uh, things 
uh, to be given to those that are interested in them. And you had the lady from Mazabuka under Tonka women who donated uh, uh, plants for uh, bananas. So I'll be giving out those plants uh, to anyone in the Kawe region. So women are donating, but they are not calling. Let's see if we have a lady now. Hi, good evening. Okay, we lost that caller. We need women to be part of uh, entrepreneurship. And we want youths to be part of this. You see, we need to be in charge of our economy. We need to see how we can control our economy. And the only way we can control our economy is if we played a part in it. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, sir. Evening, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Very well. You are through to unscripted. Okay, this is Mr. Mpanda James calling you from Rapla Province. You are welcome to the show. You are, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Um, we, are, we just want to recommend you, sir, for the, for the good work that you are doing. Otherwise, um, a very small... Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Yes. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an entrepreneur as well. The small business is the female based in Rafa So we are just behind with your program. So we, we really also need you here in Rafa Province. Okay. Uh, due to the fact that sometimes we cannot manage to follow up uh, from Lusaka to Congo into your journey, but all right thank you so much sir thank you so much uh we shall certainly be in touch and um i want you to be very free for those that might not be able you know um, uh, to follow through some of these things that we do uh you are free to follow the page and the page that i use and this page is solely uh for entrepreneurship things it is dumisani linga mangali nube i share a lot of lessons for free on entrepreneurship. You can be free to follow that page. Hi, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Evening, sir. Yes, my brother. I would like to call. My name is Sasitia. Okay. Evening, my name is Sasitia from Chelenge. From Chelenge, you're welcome here. Chelenge, Chelenge. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yes. As much as we appreciate this program that we have put in place, may I register my disappointment, sir? Yes, sir. Whenever good programs of this sort are taking place in Zambia, mm. they are concentrated on urban areas. Why do you leave rural areas behind? You know, our youth in the rural areas need to get this information as well. But they are left behind. Wow. Why haven't you taken time to plan for this informative journey or work that should cover most um, uh, rural areas in Zambia? Why couldn't you start this journey? This is my suggestion from, let's say, Zimbabwe, across Zambia to Lupia, the last place in the northern part of Luapula. Okay. Another one from Nakonde or Tanzania to Mongu, because we need our youth to learn more about this information. Because, as what you have already said, they might not be employed at one point. They, would should, they should be engaged in these different businesses. All I right. think uh, this is a welcome idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Um, thank you so much for coming through. Um, we'll see what can be done in future for such programs uh, to reach out to people in such places. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. You are representing people from such places. 
and let us see how we can um, uh, pick it up uh, from there. Thank you so much for that concern. You see, to develop a nation, we need everyone. So we cannot just look at those that are in urban places. We need consented efforts. To change the trajectory of our nation, we need everyone to play a role in this. So it is extremely important that everyone comes on board, even those in rural areas. Now, here's something that I would want to, uh, to actually you know, uh, close with. I'll just take one last call. Here's what I want to close with. We need to realize that, uh, okay, maybe I can take the call before I give my final uh, words. Hi, good evening. Good evening. This is the radical. The radical here, the radical entrepreneur here. Yes, we are talking to King Kayombo. Oh, King Kayombo? Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm just, I'm just trying to recommend the work that you are doing, sir. Yes, sir. I think I should be one of the youth that has uh, uh, benefited from your, your, your training. Uh, I've been following your, what you, your page, your work, mm. and I've encouraged every youth out there to follow your page and uh, get to learn something from that. I've attended a lot of your trainings, and uh, I should say that uh, what I'm doing is because of what you contributed to my, my work there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for that call. Uh, such words really play um, a pivotal role in, in encouraging our efforts and my efforts. And I know that many others are doing phenomenal things. I just feel bad that, you know, no lady has called. Can I just give an opportunity to a lady, if any lady can call? I think it, would, it wouldn't be so well if we close the show without a lady calling. Isn't there a lady who is watching who might wish to come through. So for the gentleman, please, you, uh, you might hold back. Let me hear out if there's any lady that might, um, that might call. Because women also must be part of this. Ladies must also be part of this. It is extremely important that we realize that to change a nation, it will call for consented efforts. Men, women, youths, everyone must be part of this. And my wish is that uh, we, may, uh, uh, we may have a prosperous country. And this calls for consented efforts. And here's something that I'll share, uh, which is extremely important. We have been hit um, by what we might not fully and totally understand. And here's, and here's a simple line. A number of people believe that success is acquired. Now, this is what I want to clear out. If you believe that success is acquired, it simply means that uh, you, 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 you then look at success as a commodity. You, you look at it as God. So if success is acquired, it simply means if someone is acquiring success, then it, re it reduces the chances of me becoming successful because others are coming in to acquire that success. Let, uh, let me see if this is a lady who is calling. Just as the, Hello, good evening. Finally, you have the lady. Very well. How are you? Yes. I could just represent the women. Oh, thank you. We have less than a minute before closing. Uh, please, you might give your thoughts. All right. Uh, no, it's a very interesting uh, topic, in fact. Uh, some of us have tried, like, like just like you say that uh, people can have money, but they don't have that, that skill to to do entrepreneurship. Yeah. Some of us have not been exposed to taking risks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whereby you invest your money into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All we know is get paid, save. Get paid, save. Wow. And that, yeah, and I feel like uh, it's very difficult to, de to develop like that. Yeah, yeah. The same amount of money you're going to put in the bank will remain the same until the next time you add more money. So from this topic, at least I've learned one or two things about entrepreneurship. Okay, great, yeah. great. And thank you so much. And in case you, you needed to learn so much more on entrepreneurship, you are free to join DLN Entrepreneurship Institute to help you on that. So finally, success... If you believe that success is acquired, uh, you will not want others to succeed. But let us realize that um, 
uh, success is created. As such, uh, we need to support each other. The more people become successful, the better for us and the better it is for our country. If our country doesn't develop, uh, it is practically impossible to produce a billionaire in a country which is not so developed. So each and every individual, uh, each and every individual success contributes to, to the success of others. So let us not look at success as something which is acquired, but let us look at, at success as something which is created. This was the message from the radical entrepreneur and the future is bright. See you on our walk from Congo to Zambia, championing entrepreneurship. May God bless you.